What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of This Week in MLS. I'm here with my dude, Kalen Carr. Yeah, How's what's it up? going, man? Good, good. How was your weekend? It was great. Awesome. Went to NYCFC game. You were out in uh, Sacramento checking things out for another movement episode. Yeah, we saw the Sac Republic play Los Dos. Um, Going to be uh, an exciting episode. Tower Bridge Battalion Ooh. was the fan support That's group nice. there. Yeah, in Sacramento. I like it. Sold out there every game. It's pretty cool to see. Awesome. Um, guys, I really want you to stick around too because at the end of this episode, I'm going to reveal who my next guest is for BTW. Ooh. And I'm really excited. All right, I'm excited. I'm excited wait. about it. So stay tuned. All right, uh, lots to get to. So we are going to start out in Toronto. And who knew that a draw could be so exciting? A big national uh, televised game on Fox between Toronto and the Red Bulls. BWP continues his scoring spree with two goals on the day. Not to be outdone, though, Josie Altador with two of his own, including the late equalizer. And Kaylin, there's a lot to talk about in this game. Um, and we can. I want to talk about Toronto and how well they played, but also Another lead blown, another late lead blown for the Red Bulls, and this has become a narrative for them. And I don't know, I'm I'm very concerned. I know you're super high on this team, but but for me, like I I, I feel like this this could be their Achilles heel, especially come playoff time. There is cause for concern, absolutely. Um, in their last ten games, they've been up two goals five times and ended up with one point. So mm -hmm. that's not good, no, right? It's not. But this one was different. You have to give Toronto credit. Uh, they changed the formation, Vanny goes to a 3-5-2 and really stretches the field wide, causes, causes some problems for the Red Bulls, they weren't quite able to adjust, and then Josie Altidore does excellent, I mean that free kick, oh, I mean, gorgeous, he's, right? He's on such good form right now. Uh, that, that's not something you generally expect from him, and then you see the goal that he gets late where he's just banging in the box a bit, is able to get a turn on a guy and hit it into the corner off a little deflection, but uh, Red Bulls for me, even though they have given up these late leads, BWP 20 goals on the season, Sasha, I think once Dax comes back, he's going to add a little bit of that composure and leadership that can give them um, a little bit more strength in those dying moments. Question though, when I feel like teams are smelling blood though now with the Red Bulls, like they know that they're susceptible to, to giving up these, these late leads and especially in the playoffs, like how big of a concern is that and then how do you, how do you address it? If you're Jesse Marsh. I, I, think, I still think that bringing back Dax is going to help. Okay. I, one player can make a difference, and I, I hate to put it all on him, but he's got that leadership, he's got that experience, he's been in those playoff games. And then I think also maybe just a bit more composure on the ball, keeping the ball, and putting away their chances. But Jesse, Jesse Marsh said it himself, if you score three goals, you're up 3-1 on the road, you should be able to close that out. All right, moving on, let's take it out to Seattle, where J-Mo Smooth scored his fifth game-winning goal of the season. That's most ever by a rookie, and his tenth goal overall, keeping the Sounders' playoff hopes alive with the 1-0 win over the White Caps. Um, now, Kaylin, I feel like Jordan Morris is needs to be in this conversation for for Rookie of the Year. Um, He's the favorite. How do you do? You, do you feel like this is justified? Absolutely. I mean, you score t scoring ten goals in MLS is not easy to do, and they haven't just been fluff goals. As you can tell, five of them have been game winners. Now, whether that's a good thing for Seattle Sounders mm -hmm. to have that much on a rookie's shoulder. That's a different question mm -hmm. and is also a bit indicative of where they are on the table. But you got to give it up to Jordan because he really has, he's had expectations, yeah. he's lived up to them, mm -hmm. and in a lot of ways exceeded them already. Now, if they don't make the playoffs and Philadelphia Union does, and he has to sit at home and watch a guy like Ro Keegan Rosenberry mm -hmm. play in the playoffs, it might feel a, a little bit hollow. Uh -huh. And the strikers are going to get the attention, but I think you've got to give Keegan a, a ton of credit as well. He's been consistently excellent for the Union throughout the season. Is it fair, with Dempsey out, um, is it fair to kind of put this pressure on Jordan Morris to be the guy, to be the one that kind of gets them over the red line? I don't know if it's fair, mm -hmm. but it's on him. Like, if they're going to make the playoffs, it's going to take Jordan scoring goals. Now, Ladero has come in and yeah. been excellent as well to be able to alleviate some of that pressure. Uh, and he's been the one who's also been the supplier for Jordan. So those two have a nice partnership, which looking forward for this club down the road is, is a big positive. All right, let's stay in the Pacific Northwest where the Timbers picked up a huge three points, defeating the Union 2-1. to one. Um, now Portland has been fantastic at home, going 11-3-2, but are winless on the road. Kaylin, how concerning is this for them, especially heading into the playoffs? 
Well, I seem to remember going to watch a Timbers game on the road in the playoffs last year. I think it was MLS Cup, <laughs> and they beat the Columbus Crew uh -huh. to win their first title in franchise history. So going on the road for the Timbers in the playoffs, I don't think is a problem. This is that same group. Um, they're going to have to do it much earlier than they would have liked probably in the playoffs. I think they expected to be further up the table. Yeah. Uh, but I think they're going to cling to that uh, probably last two playoff spots. will be right in that mix. And then you just got to go win on, one on the road. Yeah. And then actually I think the playoff format suits them well because if you're 11-3-2 at home in the regular season, you get that home and away series, chances are you just got to hold serve at home and survive on the road. And I think this is a team that's actually built for the playoffs. I wouldn't be surprised to see them make a similar run to last year. They've done it before. Um, all right, well, I think we all expected something special from Landon Donovan, but I'm not sure anybody really expected it this soon. He scored the game-tying goal, gave the Galaxy a point with a 2-2 draw in Kansas City. Um, so no Geo. Robbie Keane still kind of finding his form. Uh, what was Landon Donovan the best player on the field, Kaylin? No. <laughs> I mean, I, I would actually get, uh, Jacob Peterson was probably the most dangerous player on the field throughout the day. He's been fantastic for Kansas City. But I'll tell you what. I was on the road all weekend. Mm -hmm. I got home, I went on to MLS Live and rewatched every second since Landon came in of that game. Just because uh -huh. I want to see it. Yeah. Like, I want to see how he does. I want to see him come back. Uh, it's a treat to see him play. I think I, I don't care if people are going to get in the comments section and say they're annoyed by my sure. Landon love, but as a former player, I love playing against him. Now I love watching him play. And to see him get a goal, I think, this early is fantastic uh, for him, for the league, for the team. Uh -huh. um, and it's going to be good for his confidence. You know, yeah. last week, if you talked to him after the game, he probably would have told you how far away he was from being back in form. Now he's going to probably, he's patting his chest feeling really confident. Swagger. Yeah. yeah. And look, it's hard when you have a long layoff to really have that um, consistency. So mm -hmm. an early moment like that can help you kind of like get on the right track. Mm -hmm. The question is, is usually after long layoffs, mine injuries, not retirement. <laughs> uh, you kind of fall off a cliff after a while. You land sort of where you normally are. Mm -hmm. But the Galaxy are bringing him along slowly, I think, to help avoid that. Well, and they're now in second place in the West. Uh, they moved up a spot. And like, okay, not to get you know overly cheesy here, but but what does it mean to have a guy like Donovan return to the team? Like, what kind of boost does that give the entire team, just from a mental standpoint? Well, we talked about the Red Bulls with Dax McCarty and having a little bit of that leadership. Landon's a guy that you just want to have in the locker room. I think his influence is not only going to be on the field coming in late in goals. It's going to be um, talking to guys like Emmanuel Boateng, who he's got a relationship with, young guys who are maybe entering their first um, time in the playoffs, getting amped up for that part of the season. His leadership experience doesn't only have to show itself on the field. Uh, it's going to be in the locker room. It's going to be in training sessions, and he'll be a guy that Bruce Arena will be able to lean on. All right, well, two of the top teams in MLS faced off in New York as NYCFC and Dallas settled for a point apiece with the 2-2 draw. Um, and for NYCFC, the bad news, obviously, Frank Lampard leaves the game with this one, apparently a calf injury, which is what kept him out earlier this season. But the good news, uh, Jack Harrison, two assists, played really, really well. I was actually at this game. And uh, it was so great. His mom was sitting with all the fans, and she knew every fan by name. They were giving her hugs, and That's you cool. could tell she was so, so <laughs> proud of Jack. But she was nervous as heck. Like she, you was, said she had a cool jersey on. Right? Yeah, she did. She was wearing um, an eleven jersey, but it said Mumsy on it oh, awesome. instead of of Harrison. Yeah. But um, could this be a potential MLS Cup? Preview. I, that's what I was thinking, and and if so, I it was it was a great game. It was really really exciting. Um, just a very very dynamic game from from both teams. Um, you kind of saw that quality that was out there. Um, it, it could very well be. I hope so. Watching it for me, I saw Jack Harrison did great with two assists. He's really been a revelation this season. Uh, Kyrie Shelton yes. comes and gets a late one. I think sort of being demoted to the bench for a while. He didn't play for a long stretch of the season. It, it, it was timed with Jack Harrison's yeah. entry onto that right flank. He's come back with a little more hunger, a little bit more confidence. Has been able to score some important goals for them. You can see him buzzing. He's got all the talent in the world. So to be able to have a weapon like him off the bench, something a lot of teams don't have. Especially if Lampard is going to miss any amount of time. And that's where Tommy McNamara comes in. To me, he has been the most 
consistent creative player for them uh, throughout the season. David Villa, of course, is an MVP candidate. Frank Lampard, uh, you hope he's back. He's been excellent for them, of course. And Jack Harrison, but Tommy McNamara, the most consistent, uh, the glue guy for me. And you talk to guys around the league, um, you talk to coaches, players, and people within the organization. Patrick Vieira speaks so highly of Tommy McNamara, invaluable to this team. And he may be sliding into that role that Frank Lampard's playing. Um, underneath a little bit as a more of a distributor or playmaker. Well, there was plenty of other action this week that you could have seen if you subscribed to MLS Live. And right now, we're going to take a look at the Eastern Conference and that final playoff spot. Right now, New England has it after that 3-1 win over Montreal. Um, and let's start with this game. We have to discuss the play of Kellen Rowe, finished with two goals and an assist, Kaylin. So many different things have been asked of this guy throughout the season. I've tuned into uh, Revolution Games, and he's played everywhere from right back uh, more of like a holding mid, underneath, a second striker, out wide. Jay Heaps has really used him all over the field. He's best, though, when he's closest to goal. And the issue is for New England is there's a lot of players who fit that profile. Fagundes, Agadello, Kai, uh, Lee Wynn himself. So trying to find the right way to mash these pieces together has been a challenge. Uh, he slid out to the right a little bit in this one, um, but was able to tuck inside and had some excellent finishes. Um, you can see his confidence is brimming, and I think this may be uh, a turning point for them. Of course, after losing the Open Cup final, that can really devastate a team, and so getting that first win back uh, to get that mood back in the group was really, really important for the team's psychology. All right, Kaylin. Time for our favorite section Did you of see the show. That? Did you see that? Yes. Did you see that? Um, I'm going to let you start. Uh, well, being the analyst that I am, yes, yes. I would like to highlight a play um, off the field, actually. It's with <laughs> Breck Shea and Kaká oh going on uh, like a slingshot uh, roller coaster ride. That was amazing. Did you see that? So, it was so great. Yeah. It was so great. I think like just seeing Kaká with like, you know, a look of like sheer like terror. And like Breck is so supposed like, to be this kind of like wild oh, man dude. And he was like he was terrified. terrified. He was absolutely and terrified. And Kaká was pretty chill about it. I don't know. I think, I think he's been sneaking into those Disney rides more than people know. I, I would. That's what I'm saying. That's, That's what, what I would do yeah. if I lived in Orlando. Come on, let's be honest. Um, all right, my my. Did you see that? I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Jordan Morris and his goal because for for many reasons it was a beautiful ball in um, from Ladero and just you know watching him kind of sacrifice his body. Yeah, a bit courageous. And, and very very courageous. Um, and that's the kind of goal that he needs to be scoring and keeping their playoff hopes alive. Um, it was a huge huge three points for them. So yay, JMO Smooth. Pacific Northwest loves you now. Right. Yeah, well, not all of us. I'm trying to <laughs> not, yeah, exactly. All right, guys, as promised, it is time to reveal my next guest for BTW. Are you ready for this? I am. Ready? Do you have any guesses? Um, which conference is he in? Neither. <gasps> what? I know, Whoa. I just blew your mind. You guys, I am going to an NYCFC game with Nick star Kristaps Porzingis. Oh. Yes, um, cool. he is a big soccer fan. Um, also a big fan of David Villa. Uh, really wants to check out a game, so we're gonna NYCFC we're gonna take game. him and hang hang out with him, and it's cool. gonna be great. Isn't that dude like seven feet tall? Or he something is. Like that? I think he's seven one. Oh. <laughs> well, I stopped counting after seven. Well, yeah. yeah. Once I you. Mean, yeah. Once you're past. I seven, stopped counting after like six. Three. Exactly. I'm just excited because I'll probably feel really small. Yeah, you got to have to get some leg room. For yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. I hopefully nobody's gonna be sitting behind us. Yeah, They're, they won't be happy. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be great. That's I'm be really, fun. really pumped for it. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching another episode of this week in MLS. Um, as always, you can stay tuned to MLSsoccer.com for all your MLS updates. We will see you next week. Yeah, you're here. I'm available. I'll be available. here if I can go to the game with you guys. I want to go with. I want to be in your entourage. You can. You can powder my my forehead. Take away my shine. Hired. See you guys. <laughs>